That mind was not made up. I, I pulled this one out a couple of weeks ago and I told Run, I said, this, I, I, I gotta find this one. And I found it and I put it up and then didn't get to use it. And then, uh, I don't know, but four o'clock, it's 4.15 this morning when the storm came through. Uh, I got a lotion bottle in front of the uh, clock. So I won't look at the clock every time my eyes open. But I reached over to move that thing and knocked it off in the floor and I thought I woke everybody up then. But it was 4.15, so I laid there a few minutes and I got to thinking about what I might preach if I preach today. I, I began to think about a subject called too much salvation, but I'm still waiting on you to get pick, tell me your favorite verse and uh, give me your testimony before you uh, sit down today. God been good to you this week? Amen. Amen. Give you a lot of blessings? He did me. Give me, I, hey, I had air to breathe every day, all day long. Rain nearly every day. Brother and I went up on the mountain Thursday morning and looked to see what God was doing. I tell you what, you get on top of that, what, is, what mountain is that, brother? That's Chandler Mountain. Chandler Mountain. And uh, you get about halfway through there and you get off to the other side and you look, <laughs> there ain't nothing and it's a long way down. You can see a lot of God's country right in there. Uh, beautiful place, people working. Uh, looks like 25, 30 people out there working in a, in a tomato field. Uh, main night, they ain't slow. They work hard as they can work. You go around the curve, here's another field, there's 25 out there, you go another field, and you go there, it's good, great. We had to get off that hill, them folks was working. <laughs> uh, I, I was sort of surprised of, of going up there in the first of August and tomato plants just being set out about that high. And I thought, Lord, they won't never make it. And the old fellow said, yeah, first of October, we're gonna have plenty of tomatoes. So they planning on they planning on getting it. You know, God's so good to us. And uh, you say, well, it rained all summer. Well, they waited until it quit. <laughs> all them little lakes up there, I told her, I said, how in the world did they hew out a hole in the top of the mountain up there and it stays full of water? You dig a one down here in this holler and put a dam up and it'll go dry. I don't understand. God knows them folks need them, them wells up, them lakes up there to water them tomatoes with to try to feed the rest of us. So he takes care of them. Nobody going to say something. I, I want to give you mine. One of my favorite, I got two or three. One of them is Psalm 119, verse 1. I live by as I can, it's in Philippians, as I can do all things through Christ which strengthens. Amen. And then the other one is Romans. I mean, uh, Philippians 4, 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What's the promises? And, I mean, God owns it all. Mm -hmm. So he tells me that I don't have to worry about going hungry. I don't have to worry about what's happening out here in the world because even though he's the great almighty, he cares about a little ant like me. And he's going to take care of me. All I have to do is trust him and believe in, in him. And this morning, um, I, I, uh, I had been praying about something. And this week, God answered my prayer. And the answer to my prayer was, be still and wait. And, um, you know, you always, or I do, after God answers my prayer and everything, I think, now, God, was that really you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and then here comes Brother uh, Stan this morning. And uh, what does he say? Be still and wait. And I said, okay, God. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm slow. But, you know, that uh, there's so many times that, that God's done that, you know. Um, he feels sorry for some of us because we hadn't got real good sense, but he's right there to, to pick us up. And uh, he cared enough about me when I really wanted to know because it was for somebody I loved dearly Amen. that I was praying. And um, I didn't want to give the wrong advice. And 
So God let me know that, that he heard my prayer and that he answered me, and that was what he wanted that person to do. And um, I had prayed all, all week for the service for you and Brother Stan, and I had prayed, God, just let us, just let the Holy Spirit just not be quenched. Just let it move. You know? I came in this morning, and I walked in the door, and I kept glory bumps all through Amen. Sunday school. We had a wonderful Sunday school meeting this morning. Then the, the singing this morning, it just sounded so good. And then the preaching. I, I, God's just good. Amen. Can you say he's better to us than he is in all these other churches? I think he is. <laughs> I think he meets with us every service. I think he does. And we can shout victory if we we, we come in here ready to shout victory. Right. We come in here down looking at the ground and looking around uh, trying to find all my negativity that I can come up with. Uh, listen, we can we find something to bust crap about. It don't, it don't take long. That's right. Somebody fussed about some donut holes tonight. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was this side of Leeds. Yeah. And, and around here, there's a lot of donut holes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
But you know, God died for those folks just like He did everybody else. Amen. And we need to win those folks. And then, you know, a lot of times we, we, we talk about color a little bit, but, you know, it doesn't make any difference what color the skin is. It, it, they need to be saved. One day, this old world is coming to an end, and we need to be saved. We need to be, I want to get everybody I can ready to go to heaven. And no Jonah went an opposite direction from what he wanted to go. Now, if we stop and wait out our life, there's a lot of times that we went a different direction from what God wanted us to go. I wanted to do one thing, and God wanted to do another, and we, we argued there a little bit. You know, uh, you say, what well, do you argue with God? Well, you, you talk to him sometimes. You know, sometimes we get a message, and I don't know where Brother Stanley does or not, but I get a message sometimes, and I look at it, and I say, are you sure, Lord? I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, who is that going to affect in our church? They don't even have anybody in our church. But you know, I really don't know. I don't know what you do through the week. I don't know what you do when you leave here. But every part of a message, there's some part of that message that hits you. If you sit under God's message, right. some part of it is going to hit you. Amen. But oh, Jonah, in Jonah 1.17, says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. Well, now this didn't happen overnight, did it? Uh, Jonah, he called Jonah to go down there. He knew Jonah wouldn't go and go. So he prepared a fish. Jonah went a different direction. You know the story. I'm not going to go through all the story and make this thing long. But you know, uh, they, they throw old Jonah over and the fish swatted him up. Mm. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And the old fish got a... He, well, the Bible says that he prayed out of the depths of the sea there, out of the fish belly. And the old fish went out and barfed him up on the other side. Now, he didn't barf him up on that side, but he barfed him up over on Nineveh's side. It was too much salvation. Old Jonah had salvation. He had the sermon. He was from God. He was preaching God's sermon. He was full of the Holy Spirit. There was too much salvation for that fish to hold down at the bottom of the ocean. Matter of fact, the Bible said he was down at the bottom of the mountain. But the old fish heard from God. He carried him out. That's the first submarine ride, I guess. He carried him out and barked him up over on the other side. Hmm. Too much salvation for a whale to hold. Wait a minute. There's another little thing right there. Wasn't Jesus in the tomb three days and three nights? Mm -hmm. That old tomb wasn't strong enough to hold salvation down either. Mm -hmm. Salvation really erupted right there when he arose. Mm -hmm. right. So that salvation, there was too much salvation in that tomb for that tomb to hold. Oh, brother, that, that was a big old rock. Had a great big rock in front of it. Didn't make a difference, did it? Didn't make it a bit of difference. Whether they bury you six foot or ten foot, when the Lord comes back, ain't going to make no difference, is it? Man, <coughs> that grave ain't going to hold you down. Too much salvation there to hold you. God said you can have a home in glory. And you'll have it one day. Too much salvation for a whale to hold. Too much for a tomb to hold. Go to Acts in the 12th chapter if you want to. I'm not going to use a whole lot of scripture there. James, the brother of John, was killed in verse 2. Verse 3, Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, so he took Peter and put Peter in jail. He said, well, I'll just kill, I'll just make fun of Peter. I'll just carry him out here and we'll, we'll, we'll behead him, we'll kill him, we'll do away with him. Peter kept preaching the word of God and he, he said, hey, uh, we, we, I, he's just going to keep on preaching. Oh, Herod said, well, we'll just take him out. I mean, Acts 12, chapter, I think. What in Acts 12, chapter? Yeah. They carried old Peter down into jail. I don't believe they just carried him in the front door, but they carried him into jail. They carried him downstairs, and they carried him down there, and they put a guard on each side of him. They took him and chained him to the wall, so to speak. You know the pictures. You've seen it in, in, in movies all your life. They put guards at the door up there. All the people decided, well, we'll pray for old Peter. Peter, Peter is a good fellow. We want to pray for him. So they went in the upper room, and they began to pray. You know the story. <laughs> Angel came down and loosed the chains from old Peter's hands and feet. 
Amen. Now let me tell you something. Today, if they put somebody in jail and he gets out, they take the guard in there and they slap his hand, probably give him a raise. <laughs> but back then, if somebody got away from the guards, the guard were took out and shot. They were killed. So it was very important that the guards didn't let Peter get away. But the angel also allowed, can we say allowed or can, he, can we say made those guards go to sleep? And he even made the ones up the hallway go to sleep. So when Peter got up and went out, nobody bothered him. He found his way down to where all his friends was in the upper room praying, went around there and knocked on the door. A lady comes to the door. She didn't recognize him. Peter was in jail. Peter was in stocks. Peter ain't nowhere around here. That ain't Peter. So she told him to go away and she went back to where they were praying for Peter. Peter knocking on the door said, let me in, let me in, let me in. Yep. They inside praying for Peter. And they said, yeah. <laughs> Lots of times we're just like, we know we laugh about it, but a lot of times we're just like those folks. We're standing here praying for something and it's standing right in front of us. The door's wide open. All we got to do is go through the door and we can have what you just asked for. But yet we're standing back and saying, I don't know where he's going to do that or not. Well, God ain't going to do it just like I want him to. Well, you ain't walked through the door to see yet. I thought of Brother, Brother Kylie today as he, he was talking to us and he said, you know, I was scared to death to go down there to that church. And he said, I, I didn't know nobody. He said, Lord have mercy, I was scared to death. And, and the boy, they ordained today. And he said, I walked into that church and nobody there. But he said, you know, when I walked behind the stand, it was the easiest preaching I ever preached in my life. You know, so many times we're scared to do something. And all we got to do is step out on faith. Right. Just step out there and God will take the next step. So many times, you know, I've said a lot of times, that, you know, you can get saved between them pews if you'll come up here. But if you don't want to come up here, then... You're going to have to come up here. But through the faith of Jesus Christ, you know, I, a lot of folks said, well, you know, when I stepped out, I was just as sure saved there. Well, I wasn't. That night I got up here, and, and Brother Eddie Parker showed me that I was lost. You know, once I got lost, I found out how to get saved. Right. But uh, I just didn't want to go to hell that night. Hey. But, and, you know, the message was there. The door was open. I was 23 years old. I've been in church all my life. The doors have been open a lot of times. But I just didn't believe. I just didn't walk through that door. Peter was standing at the door. They was praying for Peter to get out of jail. Peter was standing right there talking to him. Hmm. There's too much salvation in Peter to keep him in that jail. There was a message that had to be preached. I'm sure through Brother Stanley's life, there's a lot of times that he didn't feel like going. Didn't feel like preaching a revival. Didn't feel like doing this and doing that. But you know, once you get there, well, you've heard him say a lot of times, you got less pain when you're up preaching than you are sitting around. Once I, I'm scared to death when I get here, but once the preacher gets here, I'm all right. I'm scared to death about what I'm going to say that I might hurt somebody's feelings until the preacher gets here. Once the preacher gets here, I don't worry about it. <laughs> if it hurts your feelings, you need to take it up with God. Amen. But there's too much salvation for a jail to hold. Look at Acts 16, 19 through 26. Acts 16, 19 through 26. Paul and Silas put in jail for teaching about Jesus. We've never run into that in our lifetime. Never been put in jail for preaching on a street corner. Things that we could do, we don't do. Here's Paul and Silas that had a message to preach about a man called Jesus. They were telling about his greatness and the things that were going to happen. They put him in jail. They told him, you're not going to talk about this man Jesus in here. Listen, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, 
uh, they didn't do any work. They just taught and they received money for it. They were in the temple. They were keepers of the temple. So here is these Paul and Silas come in. They begin to preach and tell about this man called Jesus. If you just believe in him, you can have everlasting life. You can have eternal life. Hey, these Sadducees, they didn't like it. The Pharisees didn't like it. Especially when they came in and said, one day you'll die, but you'll resurrect. They said, wait a minute. We don't believe in that kind of stuff. Mm, a lot of people today don't believe in that kind of stuff. How many of you, if you're in trouble, well, how many of you, if you are in the Birmingham jail down here at 12 o'clock, you'd break out singing Amazing Grace? Probably keep your mouth shut because you're afraid somebody would come and get you. But here's Paul and Silas begin to have revival. Uh, they've been in praying all night. They've been talking about the Lord. They've been talking about the good things that have happened. Along about midnight, old Paul just said, hey, let's just sing a song. Let's sing a song. But what do you want to sing? Amazing grace. Lord have mercy. Can you imagine in a solid rock building singing amazing grace and echoing through the hallways? Mm. How many of you on Facebook saw this week that little six-year-old girl singing amazing grace? Six-year-old. She's singing in a field one time and then she went into the church one time Two front teeth missing. And she sung Amazing Grace as pretty as I've ever seen anybody in my life sing Amazing Grace. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, make a joyful noise under the Lord. Brother Bud, you can sing. Brother Bill, you can sing. It's not what we like. If you love the Lord and you sing an Amazing Grace to Him, it's beautiful. Amen. It's a sweet savor right. coming up. Amen. So many times we want to keep our mouth shut. We want to sing real low because somebody might say, well, that's all right. God hears you. That's right. God hears you. If it comes from the heart, mm -hmm. good grace is alive. Oh, how I love Jesus. Right. I like the amazing grace when you put that oh, how I love Jesus in there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I love Jesus too. He's been better to me than anything else that ever happened in this world. I think of the hereafter, Lord in mercy, what he's got in store for us down through years. Yeah. About midnight, they begin to sing. <clears throat> I don't know where it was the reverberation in that brick building or not, but the chains fell off. Said it was a big old earthquake come. The chains fell off a pile of silence. Hmm. Too much salvation for a jail to hold. Brother Eddie, you done said it. That's right. What about, look at Ephesians 4 and 9. Ephesians 4 and 9. Too much salvation to hold. Ephesians 4 and 9 says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also ascended first into the lower parts of the earth? Oh, Brother Allen, he was in that tomb three days and three nights. I beg your pardon. While he was in the tomb, he ascended. Descended. He had to descend before he could ascend, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Said he went down <clears throat> to the inner parts of the earth. There was a great guff there. Mm -mm. Standing in paradise preaching to those old saints that really didn't have salvation. They believed in a God, but they didn't have salvation until Dr. Jesus died. And here they are. He's preaching to them and telling them, here I am. And all the noise coming from the other side of that God. Hell really believed that they had stepped out. Jesus. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks from now, we're going to sing a song where we got it right or not. It's called The Conversation. And it talks about Old Satan, mm -hmm. he thinks he's got it made, but when Jesus stepped across that great gulf, there was a holy hush come over hell. The Bible says he took keys to death and hell. Some folks said, great. Yeah, he never great. He, he certainly has. That's not scripture, but he's there. 
He has the keys to death and hell today. Boy, let me tell you something. There was too much salvation in Jesus Christ for hell to hold. Oh, they would have liked to keep him down there. Oh, death had him. Death had him in a stranglehold. Held him for three days. But Jesus came up. Too much salvation for hell to hold. Third Sunday in April, 1969, I got saved. I got saved, and about two years after that, I was ordained a deacon. And I tried my best to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. I've studied that book all my life. And I've tried to spread the gospel in some way. I've sent out tracts. I've worked with Brother Tim and them in the mission fields. and I've done everything I work could to get salvation out. Third Sunday, no, in, in September the 23rd, 1993, I, I admitted that God called me to preach. <coughs> I've traveled all over this, all over Alabama and Mississippi, telling people about Jesus. I've tried to spread the gospel as best I can. I'm trying to tell everybody that they can have salvation. They can have salvation. And I was perfectly satisfied in just teaching and then Brother Stanley had called me to come down here. And I've been down here trying to tell y'all people that you can have salvation. You can have it to the fullest. I can't hold it down. I've got too much salvation in me. Listen. The Bible says you can't outgive God. So the more you give out the Word of God, the more you got. Comprehend that now. The more I give out, the more I got. Some of us think, well, I studied it. Look here what I found. I found a good old tidbit right here. I'm going to keep it to myself. No, don't do that. Call your friend. Tell them, look what I found in the Bible. I've got eternal life promised to me right here. I'm going to have a wonderful place in heaven. Going to have a white robe. You can just go through You can find all kind of tidbits in there that you really like. But you know you find out? <coughs> if you trade your tidbit with Sister Shirley, Sister Shirley will say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got something I want to tell you. She gives it out. First thing you know, both of them will call two other people and they'll give out those two thoughts and the other two thoughts will say, wait a minute, I got something I want to tell you, something I found in the Bible. Listen, we need to give out the Word of God. Don't think you're going to give it. Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Brother Stanley's not going to preach anything new that hadn't already been preached. I'm not going to preach anything new that hadn't already been preached. It's all been preached. We can get one of the best messages in the world and we'll say, boy, look what God gave me. Keep in mind, he already gave it to somebody else, somewhere else. Somebody in their church had that problem or that need, and God answered that prayer. So as we stop and we think, let's, let's just keep giving out the Word of God. So it's too much salvation for a well to hold. There was too much for a tomb to hold. There's too much for a jail to hold twice. There was too much salvation for hell to hold. And there's too much salvation for you to ever tell. You will never run out. Amen. Read a book one time. Preacher was a pastor of a church. He preached for about 15 years. Went in and resigned. He said, I preached it all. I'm through. <laughs> hmm, wonder where he got that from. I got, I got boxes of sermons that God gave me that <clears throat> I hadn't even touched yet. They're still in the box. They don't, boy, they made sense last week, but they don't make sense this week. You know, you dig through there and you find, it's just like this one, too much salvation. You dig through there and you say, Lord of mercy, that, that'll, that'll bless our church. That'll, that'll make them feel good. That'll make them know that when I, have, I can go out this week, I can be a witness to somebody, I can tell, every, I can tell everybody everything I know. Then I come back next Sunday knowing more than what I did this Sunday. You can't out give God. I love you today. I appreciate you. Thoughts there for a few minutes. It's after six, so y'all run me off. I preach much yeah. longer. But, uh, <laughs> but that's God's message today.
too much salvation. We need to do what God would have us do. Give out the Word of God. Come back next Sunday, and we'll give you some more, and you can take that out and do it again. I love you. I appreciate you. Anybody got anything?